Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to do a DIY RODI system automator. So what exactly is that? Well, it's a controller which detects when my RODI reservoir is empty and full, then uses a tiny amount of logic to determine whether to open or close a solenoid to turn on or off the water flow. Sounds pretty simple. Essentially, when the reservoir is empty, it turns on the water until the sensor is triggered. It then keeps the water off until the container is empty again, and then repeats. So why would you want this? Well, it's 100% automated, so it's yet another task that you don't need to do anymore, remembering to fill your RODI reservoir to make sure that your auto top off or any other things connected to your tank that consume RODI water will never run dry. There's no chance that your pumps will ever run dry. There's no chance you'll ever run out of RODI. So you might be asking, why not just run a float valve connected to your RODI system to keep the reservoir full all the time? Well, this is a pretty common question that I get. Using a float valve alone to keep an RODI reservoir full is actually quite a costly way of running your RODI system. It will consume your DI resin much faster as your RODI system is going to be running in short bursts really regularly, essentially sipping water. Every time your tank consumes a little bit of water, the RODI system has to turn on and top up that little bit of water back into your RO reservoir. This is a really inefficient way to run an RODI system because of multiple reasons that I won't really get into. Suffice to say, it can cause TDS creep inside the RODI membrane, which then burns through your RODI resin really fast. So having a solution that drains your RODI reservoir all the way to the bottom and then fills it all the way back to the top in one go is going to save you money and maintenance on your RODI system in the long run. I would also comment that plumbing your RODI system directly into your tank first means that you can probably only use it for a single purpose, whereas having a reservoir allows you to use your RODI system for multiple purposes. You could have multiple tanks, multiple reactors, or different bits of equipment that can all independently draw RODI water for any purpose um, independently. So the next big question should be, is automating the refilling of your RODI reservoir safe? And the answer to that is, well, it's as safe as you want to make it. One way to add redundancy is to double up on all the float switches that we'll be using. In case one float switch fails, the system won't fail. Uh, but the main fail-safe that I recommend and that I've personally installed on mine is to use it in conjunction with a simple float valve. So with that on the output of uh, the RODI into the reservoir, this will catch all manner of failures associated with the system uh, and prevent an overflow no matter what. One thing to note is that you will need to install an auto shutoff valve in your RODI system if it doesn't already have one. This is super simple to do and you may find that your model already has one, especially if you're already using your RODI system with a water storage tank. Uh, it's highly likely that there's one that's already installed in there, but just double check with the company that you purchased it, purchased it from. All right, so let's go through how to build it. Well, you'll need the following things, and all of these I'll be linking in the description below. You'll need a hobby case like this, preferably one that's IP66 fully waterproof. You'll need at least two float switches, however you can use more if you want additional redundancy. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes such as these. Choose the appropriate ones for your use case. You can get long ones like this which are great for your bottom sensor and you can get 90 degree ones if you want to mount the float switch into the side of a reservoir rather than the top. One note that I would add is that the cheap ones on eBay in my experience are rubbish. They provide inconsistent responses, they often get stuck in one position or another, so just shell out the extra few bot dollars for a better quality one, such as those that I've listed below in the description. You will need a normally closed 12 volt solenoid valve with a quarter inch RODI fittings already attached to it. Being normally closed is important, that means that when the power is not applied to the valve, it's closed. You'll want a float valve. Uh, that's an essential piece of redundancy, like I mentioned earlier. You'll need some wire and a soldering iron, a simple 12 volt power supply like this one. Uh, a 1 amp one will work, but I would suggest getting a 2 amp rated one just to make sure you've got a bit of overhead. And finally, 
this controller board, the XHM203 Full Automatic Water Level Controller Module. This costs just a couple of dollars on eBay and will be the brains of our operation. This controller operates a small amount of logic that essentially opens and closes this relay, giving power to the solenoid or not, dependent on the state of the circuit. Here, where you connect the flow valves. You can see from this diagram how it's intended to be used. The only difference is that we're not using it to turn on or off a pump, but rather to turn on or off a 12 volt solenoid, which is perfect because the board itself runs on 12 volt, so it can all run from the same power supply. To wire it up, as you can see here, it's extremely simple. You can see the black wire here is connected to the relay outputs, and this is where the circuit to the solenoid gets opened and closed. The blue side here goes directly to the solenoid. These two connectors are for the float switches. The left one is the bottom switch and the right one is the top switch. Wire it up temporarily and test it manually by operating the switches yourself. If it's not functioning as, as expected, you probably need to flip the orientation of the floats in your float switches. Just remove the bottom clip, flip the float around the other way and replace the clip. All right, so I have an example here and I'm gonna show you how it works. With this example, everything is upside down. So just bear that in mind. Uh, you're just gonna to have to flip everything in your imagination. So we can see here, this tall sensor is the bottom float valve. And this short sensor here is the top float valve. And currently, both LED lights are green on our controller. So right now, because both of these floats are pushing down, or if we flip it up, uh, it means that the sensor thinks that the water level is full. So if you were to flip this upside down, you could see how both of those would be floating and the reservoir would be full of water. So let's simulate the reservoir draining. The first thing that would happen is this one would stop floating. As you can see, one of the green lights just turned off. Now, if I drop that again, that light turns back on, pick it up, the light turns off. Now, nothing actually happens a bit with the change in this float valve, it's just uh, the first out of both triggers. Now, the second trigger is that if this one is off, as it is right now, and now this one stops floating, at this point, the water is now filling so there was a little click, you might not have heard it, but the solenoid is now open and water would be flowing in. Now, water's not currently flowing in because I have the tap turned off, but uh, if this was set up in my reservoir, right now it would be filling with water. So the first thing that happens is it starts filling with water is this bottom sensor starts floating again. So I'll let that go and that light went solid and now the next light is flashing. The solenoid is still open and water would still be flowing out of this into uh, the reservoir. And it will be filling and filling and filling and filling and filling until this one here stops, uh, or sorry, starts floating. So when I release my finger on this one and let it drop, now both lights are green, the solenoid will be closed now and the water will no longer be flowing. So here's my installation. I use a 25 litre plastic storage tub that I got from Bunnings. It has a hinge lid and is the perfect size for the cabinet next to my fish tank. I drilled appropriate holes for the float switches and the float valve, as well as for the various lines and tubes associated with my ATO and the other things that draw RODI water, such as my calc stirrer. I've been running this for over six months now and it's never skipped a beat. I think it's been automatically refilling on average about once a week. Obviously, if I had a bigger or smaller reservoir, or more or less demand for RO from my tank, that frequency would change. Anyway, that's all for now. If you have any questions, please post them down below and I'll do my best to help you out. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the bell notification to watch all my future videos. My name is Marcus, you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.